I have often watched my truck from a distance, baking in full sun, thinking to myself, it would make a lot of sense to use the sun's energy to power the fridge, and maybe even charge the leisure battery. Hello and welcome to Sinrumbo, I'm Philippe. In this video, I will guide you through the process of choosing the size of your solar panel. I want to make this as simple as possible for you, so I will give you free a spreadsheet to help with the calculations, and I will show you how a solar panel fits in your 12 volt system. If you do not know yet what is a watt or an amp, or if you just need to refresh your memory on 12 volt systems, I encourage you to pause this video and first watch my previous video on how to choose a battery, then come back to this one. We will start with a quick review anyway. Now, let's get started. The engine takes care of properly charging the engine battery through the battery to battery charger or some other device when the engine is running the leisure battery will also get charged when we are stopped and using our camper appliances we gradually discharge the leisure battery when we are parked in the sun our electric system will use the energy stored in the leisure battery to run the fridge and fight the heat to keep our food and drinks cold. Wouldn't it be nice if we could use the energy from the sun itself to do exactly that? And that is exactly what a solar panel will do for us. It will convert the sun rays into electricity that can be used to power our fridge for example. If we choose our panel wisely, instead of ending the day with a discharged battery, we can now expect to end the day with a battery almost fully charged. Now you will need to go to my blog and download the free spreadsheet before you continue with the video. So download the spreadsheet called Solar and open it in your computer so that you can follow along. Also, click the link to the number of sunshine hours and find out what is the average number of hours of sunshine where you live. You will need to input this number in the spreadsheet. Ready? Let's move on then. Once you have opened the spreadsheet, you will notice some yellow fields and some white ones. You can only change data in the yellow fields. The white ones are calculation results. In the top left section of the solar spreadsheet, you will find the section called Assumptions. The top line in that section is the battery capacity in amps per hour. If you already have a leisure battery installed, just enter its capacity here. If you are only designing your system at this point, then you can vary this number and see how it affects the behavior of the 12 volt system. The next line below is the minimum allowable state of charge of the leisure battery. 50% is usually considered the minimum. Initial state of charge is the charge available at your first stop, the first night for example. Be conservative, 80 or 90% is a safe assumption. Next below we have the nominal capacity of solar panels. You can start with zero, then increase gradually to see how long you can last off-grid and without running the engine to recharge the leisure battery. That takes care of input power. Now we have to move to the right to the section called daily usage. Here we find a few categories, for instance fridge, lights, etc. Each category has two lines average amps and average hours per day. Per day here must be understood as per 24 hours. Here you need to estimate how many amps your appliances consume and how long they are running per 24 hour cycle. 
For example, my fridge uses about 5.5 amps when running and I estimate it runs at about a 40% duty cycle. That means in an hour it is off 60% of the time, about 35 minutes, and on about 25 minutes. I usually turn it off at night because in the mountains it is cold enough at night that the fridge doesn't need to run. So if I turn it on at 9 in the morning until 8 o'clock at night, that is 11 hours. 40% of 11 is about 4.5 hours. I will round it off to 5 hours per day. Repeat for all appliances. Notice that the major appliances like the fridge uh, will have a sticker on the side or on the back that will uh, usually tell you how many watts it draws and you can convert that to amps or directly it might uh, tell you how many amps the fridge will draw when running. Then to the far right we find the day-night usage. Here we need to estimate the ratio of hours a day each appliance is running. For instance, the lights will be on only at night when the solar panels do not produce any electricity. At night your fridge might run less often if the temperature cools off enough. Now we come to the results section in the lower part of the spreadsheet. And here we need to enter one last piece of data in the yellow line called assumed sun hours per day. That information you can obtain from the UN data webpage, look up your city or the closest one, get the annual number of sunshine hours and divide by 365 to get the daily number. My city receives an average of 7.8 hours of sunshine a day. To be conservative, I used 6 in the spreadsheet. How to interpret the results? Let's look at the first column, the one that has numbers only for the night. It is assumed that we drove during the day and arrived at camp with our leisure battery 80% full. That's what we assumed at the beginning. The last three lines show us the most important information, but more importantly is the second column of numbers labeled Day 1, which represents a full 24 hours of off-grid operation from the night before. The spreadsheet shows us how we start the day and how we end it. If you look at night battery state of charge, you can see if your battery has more or less charge than at the beginning of the day. And in the bottom line battery state of charge, at the end of the day, you can see how much capacity is left in the battery in the morning. In the assumptions, you can play with either the battery capacity or the solar panel wattage and see how your system behaves over time by looking at the evolution of the battery state of charge at the end of day as the days go by. You can decide what is acceptable to you depending on your style of camping. Maybe a day or two off-grid is all you expect to do. Maybe you want to be able to stay a week. It's up to you, but at least now you have numbers available to make an informed decision. Now, I'd like to touch on an unavoidable component of a solar installation, and that is the solar regulator, also called solar charge controller. It is simply an electronic device that fits between the solar panel and the leisure battery. It will make sure that the battery receives an acceptable voltage and current, even though the solar panel output will fluctuate over the course of the day and with changing weather conditions. It must match the battery voltage, most likely 12 volts, and pass at least as much current as the solar panel can supply. You'll find that number in the specs sheet of the solar panel. In the example here, the regulator should be at least a 10 amp model. There are two main types of regulators. PWM or pulse width modulation. It is the cheapest type, but the drawbacks are a risk of interference because the unit sends pulses to the battery. 
these rapid pulses can interfere with radios and TVs. They are also not as efficient as the next type, and that is the MPPT or Maximum PowerPoint Tracking. Those are more expensive, but they will waste less of the solar energy, mostly in cloudy conditions for example. They do not cause any interference. If you can afford the higher cost, they are often a better choice, though small systems under 150 watts in sunny climates can get away with the PWM controllers. To mount the solar panel to the roof of your camper or vehicle, remember to leave about 1 inch of space between the mounting surface and the panel for proper cooling. That's why I listed mounting brackets in the parts list. I used two L brackets bolted together, which allows me to compensate for the curvature of the roof. From the panel, run down the cable that will connect the panel to the regulator. There is a strict sequence to follow upon introducing the solar regulator or charge controller to the solar electric system while connecting and while disconnecting the wires between the solar panel, charge controller and battery bank. Connect your load to the battery, through the inverter of course in case of AC appliances, then the battery to the solar regulator. And lastly, connect the solar panel to the regulator. If your system is low power, you can omit the fuses, but I would recommend at least one between the battery and regulator. This fuse should be sized for the maximum current the regulator can supply to the battery. For example, if your regulator can supply a maximum of 20 amps, use a 20 amp fuse. In case you need to disconnect the solar panel and or regulator, simply proceed in reverse order. The regulator will have three groups of terminals, each with a positive and a negative terminal. Use the load terminal of the regulator only for small DC loads like 12 volt LED lights for example. As said above, everything else should be connected to the leisure battery or the inverter in case of AC appliances. Remember to follow the correct order to connect or disconnect a solar panel. Your solar panel will most likely come with a pair of MC4 connectors. Those can be quite confusing to figure out so I made this little diagram to help you identify which part is which. Of course, double check with a voltmeter which cable is positive and which one is negative from your solar panel. We have now completed all five steps. This video, as I promised at the beginning, is a basic overview of the process of selecting and installing a solar panel to your camper. I hope it has given you enough information and confidence to get started and to understand what is involved. We've reviewed the basics of a 12 volt installation, the need for solar, how to estimate the size of our solar panel, and there I gave you a free spreadsheet to make your calculations. In part 4, we talked about the solar charge controller or regulator, and finally, how to install and connect all the parts together. I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching. Please like and comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. Have a great day!